Well, let's do this again, but this time a week later. Almost a similar intro to last week's when I was previewing the Western semi-final here, but there's definitely some parallels again in the Western final, except this time it's a week later here. As we know, it was we didn't know until the final week of the CFL regular season that it was ultimately the Saskatchewan Rough Riders that was going to be hosting the Western Final. That will be on Sunday, November the 17th. That will be at 2.30 Mountain Kickoff or 4.30 Eastern, depending on where you're in this country here. I just did a preview of the my preview for the Eastern Final video, so you can see that. But now let's focus on the west side of the bracket here as it's time to preview the Western Final here and to give you a hint on Let's do this again a week later this time. Well, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were waiting for either the Winnipeg Blue Bombers or the Calgary Stampeders here. And sadly, as a Stampeder fan, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to move on to take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the playoffs once again in Saskatchewan. Last year, they met each other for the in the Western semifinal for a chance to go to Calgary in the Western final here. However, this year they're going to meet again in Regina, but they'll come to Calgary for the 107th Grey Cup here. So that's what I meant by let's do it again, but this time a week later here. So the Western final in the 2019 CFL playoffs are on the road to the 107th Grey Cup. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to ultimately be hosting the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So once again, another Prairie rivalry matchup here. And the winner of it will obviously be off to the 107th Grey Cup as Western Champions here. So, uh, like I said, the Western semifinal. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers convincingly beat the Calgary Stampeders 35-14 to here. May I add that the Calgary Stampeders actually led 14-8. At halftime here, but the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers go over some numbers here. Well, Zach Caleros, he was uh, 11 for 21 passing here for only 193 yards and had a touchdown pass here. I mean, he was he was average. However, his backup apparently has a broken foot. Actually, was the leading rusher. He was 13 for 82 yards rushing, including a touchdown there. And Darvin Adams. He only made two catches, but for 105 yards, including one 71 yard touchdown strike there, which uh, definitely felt like putting the dagger in the Calgary Stampeders in the second half here. And Mercy Matson, Mike Jones, and Nick Taylor all each had an interception from Bo. So that's a big reason why the Winnipeg Blue Bombers advanced, won this game and advanced to the Western Final. His, they took over in the second half in time possession and uh, they made the plays when it mattered the most, either in the air or especially on the ground here. Calgary, well, it wasn't a pretty game for Bo Levi Mitchell. For our Stampeder fans, we just like to call him Bo. Bo was, this has got to be his worst game ever. He was uh, 12 for 28. He only threw for like 140 yards there. Threw for a touchdown and uh, only three interceptions here. Don Jackson actually had an okay day on the ground. He was eight carries for 79 yards here. Josh Huff was lead receiver. He had six catches for 66 yards, so he almost had half of Bo's yards there. Reggie Bagleton, he only had two catches for 24 yards, but he did have one touchdown catch, and he actually had one touchdown run for one yard there. Winston McManus led the way with eight tackles, and the only other positive I can... Highlight for the Calgary Stampeders is Lorenzo Jerome had 138 all purpose yards and 100 turns and kickoff returns here. So it definitely was also a cold day. Maybe that was definitely a factor for the uh, Calgary Stampeders and how Bo played. But uh, yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers uh, are advancing and uh, Calgary Stampeders, unfortunately, this would have been their fourth trip to the Grey Cup if they went to the Grey Cup. But uh, Fortunately, they're not going to be able to play and potentially win at home this year, which makes this guy uh, one sad Stampeder fan. But 
I still got a job to do and uh, still got to give you these previews and I'm a CFL fan second for sure and uh, I'm still going to enjoy the games and uh, the festivities and of course I'll be in the stands regardless who plays. So uh, anyway, looking at the records here, all the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they were 13-5 and and they finished first in the West Division there which gave them the right to host the Western Final here. They were a strong 8-1 at home and a very strong 7-3 versus the West here considering the Western Division collectively it was a much tougher division in the East. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they were third in the East with a respectable 11 and 7 record here. However, they were 3 and 6 on the road, but they were a strong 7 3 in the West here. So, uh, interesting to see how this matchup breaks down here. So, look at the season series here. Well, uh, all these games didn't happen until Labor Day on, as these two teams always traditionally meet on uh, Labor Day Sunday, and this year was no different. Back in week 12, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders hosted this game, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won the first game. 19 to 17 here on the last second field goal there. So Saskatchewan drew first blood in the season series as these two teams actually met three times. And uh, actually Saskatchewan, I think if I remember correctly, they have won 15 to the last 16 Labor Day Sundays here. Although interestingly, the one year that they lost, I was at that game. Uh, I, it was a little crazy for me to go to uh, Saskatchewan to catch the Labor Day Sunday game because it was the last year that the uh, and it wound up being my last live game at the old Mosaic Stadium there. And I haven't been to the new one other than the sneak peek they have. But uh, I definitely want to go catch a game in the new stadium. But it, that was the, uh, that day in Winnipeg 1. So uh will be interesting how I look at that. However, the following week, they always have the rematch called the Banjo Bowl. You can thank uh, Troy Westwood, the kicker, former kicker for the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers for... Colorado Rider fans, Banjo picking Hicks, and, uh, and then they say they might not be smart enough to play a banjo. That's an interesting history here. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers got even as they beat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders 35-10 to there, convincing there. So uh, the rubber match happened on week 17, and that was back in Saskatchewan. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 21-6 to there, and Saskatchewan takes the season series. 2-1 to one with the home team winning every game here. So, uh, I'm going to say after week 17, that's when Winnipeg really started turning things on here. So, that's the season series here. Playoff history here, well, as I said in the opening year, these two teams actually played each other just last year but in the West Western semifinal. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers beat the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. This game was in Saskatchewan. 23-18 to 18 there. And then before that... You have to go all the way back to 2007 here. It was the 95th breakup in Toronto. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won their first breakup since 1989 with a 23-19 victory there. And Winnipeg was in the East Division that year because of uh, the fact that Ottawa folded the Renegades franchise. And Winnipeg has spent a lot of their history in the East Division there, so that wasn't a crossover. But that was definitely... Uh, Interesting to see that game. And then before that, it was 2003 at the West Semifinal where the Winnipeg Blue Bombers hosted that game. But the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won this one 37-21 to 21 here. So when, it look, when you're looking at uh, semifinal games here, the road team has won. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out here. Who wants to come to Calgary? Does Saskatchewan want to come back to Calgary? come to Calgary to have Ryderville and our house or does Winnipeg want to come back to Calgary again after being us last week here so this is now time to look at the matchup here on each position here starting quarterback here well Saskatchewan has Cody Fajardo he's definitely been a little banged up here and there's been questions on his health here however all indications are he's going to play but we don't know how healthy and 100% he's going to be but he definitely had a spectacular season here. Oh, this is going to bubble up this storyline here, is that Winnipeg now has Zach Caleros. And Zach Caleros actually started the season as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Got here like 
three or four plays in. Eventually, Cody Fajardo took over as the starting quarterback, and the Saskatchewan Roughriders traded him to Toronto, and he didn't play in Toronto, and Winnipeg saw him deal with Toronto at the deadline to get him to support Chris Strebler, who is the other quarterback that I think Winnipeg is going to use the platoon system once again, like they did the last week there. So, looking at this matchup here, and big potential storyline here between Fajardo and Caleros, I'm going to give this one a push here, because uh, you got Fajardo's health, and then you got Caleros trying to make a comeback, and maybe uh, he wants to, uh, you know, stick a little in personal redemption for himself here, because he's definitely looked upon it as a one of the better quarterbacks here, and he's trying to make a health comeback here. And then Chris Drever, he's definitely tough as nails here. Running back here, well, this is definitely going to be a mismatch here. Saskatchewan, they have William Powell, the guy you got from Ottawa here. However, Winnipeg, they still have Andrew Harris. However, Winnipeg can also employ Chris Drever and Nick Dembski as options, and that was definitely one of the reasons why they are advanced to the Western Fall here. Saskatchewan does also have Marcus Stigpin as an option here. However, the edge big time goes to Winnipeg here when it comes to uh, running back here. Receivers here, however, Saskatchewan is definitely, they've been led by Shaq Evans all season and Kyrie Moore. Don't forget they also have uh, Naaman Roosevelt and the Manny Show, Manny Arsenal. However, Winnipeg, they're led by Darvin Adams. He had a big game last week. They also have Rasheed Bailey and Kenny Lawler. Also, they got Drew Latarski and Nepski to provide some depth here. However, I'm going to give the edge to Saskatchewan when it comes to the receivers here, because I definitely like the season that uh, both Evans and Moore has provided for the Saskatchewan Roughriders here. Fence of line here. This is going to be a close matchup here. Saskatchewan. I mean, they've got a great unit with Dan Clark, Phil Brake, and then veteran Brandon Bat, who it's been on both sides of this prairie rivalry here. Winnipeg, well, they got Stanley Bryant and Jamarcus Hardrick. I don't see anyone get heavy edge here, so I'm going to give a push to the offensive line here. And it's definitely going to be a good matchup to see who provides most protection for their respective quarterbacks and uh, any open up any holes for their respective running games here. So that's the offensive side of the ball here. So now we'll look on the defensive side of the ball here. I think it's going to be interesting to see which level is going to have the edge here, starting with the defensive line here. Well, I mean, Saskatchewan, they definitely got a veteran in uh, Charleston Hughes and A.C. Laren. I also think they got Michael Johnson there as an option as well. Winnipeg is definitely led by William Jefferson. Another potential storyline here is that William Jefferson signed with Winnipeg after being in Saskatchewan there the last few years. He's definitely a beast here, so... I'm going to actually say Winnipeg's been fired up in that category led by Willie Jefferson, so I give Winnipeg the edge there when it comes to the defensive line. Probably the linebackers here. This is in the second level here. Saskatchewan has a long-time line. Now Rough Rider, tackle machine, Solomon Aluminium here. And they also got Cameron Judge. Winnipeg, they also have another uh, former line of Solomon and Million in terms of Adam Big Hill and Kyrie Wilson have been Playing strong late here. However, I think Saskatchewan's a lot deeper in the linebackers here, so I'm going to give the edge to Saskatchewan here. Defensive backs here. These are the guys that are out in the secondary there who try to cover receivers here. Well, Saskatchewan is definitely stacked in that category. You got Mike Edom, Lucas Perifoy, Nick Marshall, and then Ed Ganey. He definitely can be an interception vacuum there too. Well, Winnipeg, they got no slouch. They got Winston Rose, who led the CFL in interceptions. And then also, they had a collective effort in shutting down Calgary last week. However, I'm going to give the edge to Saskatchewan there when it comes to the secondary, the defensive backs here. So now we look on the special team side of the ball here, the return game. Saskatchewan does have a few good players here, but it's been a while something's happened with uh, Marcus Snigpin or Luchas Pilfoy or Kieran Moore, those are the guys that usually get employed to do the returns for Saskatchewan here. However, Winnipeg still has Darian Grant here, and he definitely had some big games against the Calgary Stampeders this season. 
he also did have a touchdown against return against Saskatchewan this year. So based on that alone and the fact that Janarian Grant is I looked it up, he was definitely a speedy star at Rutgers University here. I'm going to give the edge to Winnipeg when it comes to the return game. Kicking game here, Saskatchewan, they have Brett Lowther, who's a pretty good uh, field goal kicker, and they got John Ryan, former Seahawk. He also, also played for Winnipeg before he went to the NFL. However, Winnipeg, they got uh, Justin Medlock, who does both jobs here, and Medlock definitely has the edge in terms of kicking longer field goal of the leg here. So I actually will get the slight edge to Winnipeg here when it comes to kicking here. The weather forecast here, well, for Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the fans, definitely is going to be a lot more comfortable game to be at. As our Viper Canada is forecasting a high of 5 and cloudy. Definitely better than minus 15. It was sunny, but it was minus 15 in McMahon, and I at least had the advantage of being on the sunny side, so at least I had the sun until halftime here. And the low was minus 2 and clear, so... Uh, Weather will not be as much of a factor in this game, or the cold, where it's, you could say was a factor in the uh, western semifinal last week. And if you look at the eastern semifinal, it was kind of a gloomy gray day tier too. So weather is not looking like to be a factor in this game here. So now this is the part of the episode, video, or I was about to say episode, where I'll make a case on this team will win if. Saskatchewan will win if Cody Fajardo has no straight stage fright and uh, stays healthier. This is, I know a lot of these college players play in college in front of like, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 fans here, but college ball is definitely a different animal than professional ball here. So let's see how Cody Fajardo plays. If he continues his MOP like season here, uh, Saskatchewan has definitely got a good chance to make a trip here to Calgary for the Great Cup. Let's see if he doesn't get stage fright and then his health. That's definitely going to be the storyline coming in. Uh, also, besides the uh, Zach Clare also being on the other side of the sidelines here. I'm going to say Saskatchewan win. If they match Winnipeg's rushing attack, either by Harris or Straveler or whoever else, Saskatchewan's definitely going to need to uh, make sure their defense does not spend a lot of time on the field and devil out the time of possession here. Another factor why Winnipeg was able to beat the Calgary Stampeders last week. Uh, which was the next point. Dominate the time of possession. Keep the uh, Saskatchewan offense on as much as possible. Which it's, I'd say it's always a, ta a tax, taxing task for the defense if they're always out there. Last one is profesh, pressure, passing, and rushing. So uh, if they can get into the kitchen of Claris or Strevler and uh, cover their deep, you know, their receivers there. So uh, that was the points that I think it would take for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to win this year. Winnipeg will win if Zach Claros comes back to Hunt Riderville. If Zach Claros continues his magic here, he's definitely looked plain, plain inspired here. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to be extra inspired knowing that he's coming back on a team that gave up on him. So uh, let's see how Zach Claros is. I also want to say Winnipeg will win if Andrew Harris has a big second half. That was why the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were able to get to the Western Final last year as Andrew Harris had a big second half, including the fourth quarter that kept Saskatchewan's defense on the field there and grind them down. So if it's a big running game, including by Andrew Harris or Chris Strever or even you know, Zach Claros, Winnipeg will likely win this game. I'm going to say Winnipeg will win if they frustrate Saskatchewan receivers. If uh, Fajardo can't find them, well, he'll be ineffective there, just like uh, Bo was last week. Well, it depends on going back to how big of a game Cody Fajardo is. And the last one, i got to throw in Janarian Grant. If he has a big day returning, returning kicks or punts, if he gets some good field position or returns one to the house. So I'm going to have to throw in a Janarian Grant again in this one. So who do I think is going to win the Prairie Bowl and uh, make a trip to Calgary for the 107th Grey Cup here? I'm going to say Winnipeg, but with 45% confidence here. I mean, right now, Winnipeg look, is looking like the team of destiny here on how they've uh, gotten hot here in the second half here. But, I mean, my confidence is in that range because 
I'm anticipating this is going to be a much closer matchup. I could see this game, if everyone plays to their potential here, and no one sh or what's the bid, I think uh, this game is going to be decided, maybe potentially with a last second field goal. Just like Labor Day Sunday that game was. And I, I am thinking this could potentially be a, a defensive struggle game here. Right? Whoever wins the uh, field position battle here. But uh, Winnipeg just looks like they're the, they have that it factor a little more than Saskatchewan right now. And uh, there's just a lot of question marks in the health of the quarterback here. So I think Winnipeg is going to take this one, but I also wouldn't be surprised if uh, Saskatchewan takes this one either. So my confidence isn't high either way. But, uh, you know, I would be stunned if it was like a 21-point, you know, win for one side, like last week's Western semifinal here. So that's my on the road to the Grey Cup. I got my Eastern final preview done, and here's the Western final preview. So, uh... I'll just say enjoy the games and next week we'll have my final video on who is going to be playing for the 107th Grey Cup here in Calgary and who I ultimately think will be bringing it home here. So if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just make sure you hit like, subscribe. I mean, I'm a sports fan here, obviously, CFL fan, but the Calgary Stampeders do come first in my books and I do cover the Stampeders with my Calgary Stampeders this month. I also do Calgary Flames, Calgary Hitman game recaps. There's also going to be Calgary Roughnecks coverage once their season gets going in the NFL here. But I also post personal blogs, attempt to comedy, and uh, I do capture, you know, scenery videos or moments at sporting events. Let's say like last week at the Western semifinal or, or you know, my last moment at the Labor Day Sunday game back in 2016. It's all in my... Playlist there, Calgary Stampeders and CFO moments here, but, uh, you know, I'll just say, if you like all that, just make sure you follow along, hit that bell icon, and I'll say, I'll see you in the next video, enjoy the games, and uh, stay tuned next week when I'll preview the the big game, the 107th Great Cup, right here in Calgary, so I'll see you then.